The first video, uh, if you haven't watched the intro already on um, the desk and remote workers series, I'm just going to put some videos together. And, you know, I'm a weightlifting coach. I like sports performance, all those things, but I spend a lot of time at a desk as well um, doing a video like this, um, grading papers, uh, doing remote coaching, whatever it may be. Um, I spend a lot of time in video. And so, um, again, this is why I wanted to make this series. You can go back and look at the intro video in the playlist here. But um, let's start with, and I'll get right to it here. Let's start with the neck posture. By the way, if you haven't already, before I get right to it, subscribe to this channel, like this video if you end up liking it and find it valuable. And uh, thank you again for all those of you who have been subscribing um, and trying to grow our list here. Share these videos with anybody you like. Um, all right, neck. Okay. So, uh, a lot of time spending at, at a desk. Um, and we'll talk about eyes too eventually, but is the neck posture. Okay. Neck posture. A chair is obviously one of the more important things. If you're going to spend a lot of time seated that you need to be mindful. If you're on a laptop, if you're remote working, whatever it is, putting a laptop on your, your lap for long periods of time can be a bad idea. Okay. So let's talk about, you know, like what would be a good postural position for a neck. And then um, if you are tight, like I find myself, you'll see when I even show you demonstrations here, I'm very tight because of the chair that I have. It's not the way it should be, right? And I'm working on getting a new one, okay? So let's talk about pop, proper position. I'm going to turn sideways here. I'm going to bring my microphone with me, okay? And you can see that in a properly neutral aligned spine, it'll look something like this, okay? What tends to happen, though, is if we um, start to lean forward or slouch, right? we start to push the head forward as well. And we get in a position that looks more like that. In order to see the screen, I'm gonna have to lift up my chin, okay? So if you think about what's happening here in terms of muscles, is you have muscles here that are gonna get stretched, right? And muscles back here that are gonna get tight, okay? And so when you pull back, you might find that, oh man, the back of my neck really is tight, okay? If you're out on a laptop, I'm giving you examples here of what, what, what can be a faulty neck postures we need to be mindful of. If you're on a laptop, you might spend your time here with your chin buried, okay? And your and as you look down at the laptop, right? If you're like me and you have a chair that doesn't have a proper back, many times I can slouch and I'll slouch down and I'll end up working even on the computer like that. And when you lift your head up, then you'll find that you're tight through here. We have a lot of small muscles throughout the front of our neck. Of course, the, the little bigger one, your sternocleidomastoid. Um, and then and I mentioned the muscles in their back. We have a lot of um, smaller ones that are deep and then some superficial ones. Uh, levator scapula is one. Like you can see that thing sticking out. If you can grab it and ping it like a guitar string, you know that you've got some stress going on, right? If you try to just pull your shoulder blades down and lean forward and your neck is jammed, um, you know that you've got some stress in your levator scapulae. Okay, so let's talk about how to um, address some of these postural problems. Number one I mentioned is a good chair. Okay, for me, my problem is doing this, and so I get tight through these muscles here. And so getting a chair that has a, a headrest in it that I can lean back on and has a curve that conforms to the, my spine and my neck, uh, the, uh, the portion of my neck, the cervical area of my neck, okay, that gives that natural arc. And so now I can lean against it and maintain a neutral head position. I don't want something that pushes me down. I just want something that supports my neck. And so, again, when I go into that side position here, right, it's not something that's going to push me forward, and it's not so flat that I sit ridiculously like that, right? But I have a neutral head position. There's a natural curve that's part of our cervical spine, okay? And that allows that neutral head, lap being a, a proper chair. You can see this chair I have here is not a good one, right? Because it will allow me to sit tall and lean against that brace, okay? So that's, and again, that's, you have to be in a properly seated, uh, set up desk and everything else, it's a position that you can feel confident leaning against that chair and working. All right. And that can be, again, adjusting your setup with your computer or whatever it may be. So a chair back that is sufficiently high with some sort of neck support that you will use and lean against and adjusting your as much as possible. I realize I'm living in a fantasy world here, but it's, if you're at home, you certainly can. Adjusting the height of your monitor, whatever it may be, to make sure everything is at eye level and you don't feel like you have to lean forward. If you get intense about something, right, and you like to lean and get into it, you want to work on moving your whole body forward rather than just moving your head. Okay, don't lead with your head. Lean your whole body forward. Lean at the hips. And as you're intently typing the angry email to somebody, right, you're, you still have a neutral head posture. Okay? What do you do if your head is already, or your neck is already tight and you're already having headaches and, and these type of things to adjust? Let's say you get a chair and you're working on it, but man, you just find your neck is really tight. So let's go to the, you know, the, the common slouch and push, okay? 
how do you address that? Or if you don't have an option of getting a nice chair, okay, for whatever that may be. Number one, you got to work on your posture. Now, um, I'm work, uh, I'm taking this video from the approach of things you can do at your desk, okay? And there's things that you can do in the weight room that are also very beneficial. In reality, though, in reality, the most impact you're going to have on postural positions in the neck are going to be when you're actually working. Cause, and it's just a simple um, time calculation. If you work you know, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 15 hours a day in a seated posture where you're head pushing and then you go to the gym for an hour, you're not going to be able to correct all those issues as, as sufficiently, as efficiently and long lastingly, sorry, look at the camera more, um, is if you actually address them when you're doing, um, you know, when you're actually working. Now, if you're tight already in any one of these areas, don't try to um, do, and, and I'm going to give you some sets and reps and things you can do. Don't try to do too much too early. You're going to get massive headaches. Okay. Ease into it. Just like you would go, if you haven't been to the gym, you've never done back squat before. You don't hop under there and try to do hundred reps of heavy back squats, right? That's just not something you want to do. You want to ease into it. Okay. You might do a few sets. And so take that same approach and I'll give you some, again, some parameters in a little bit of when you're trying to readjust your or stretch your neck. Okay. Keep in mind also that we have a lot of sensitive tissues on the front of our neck when we go the other way. And we don't want to be mashing in there too hard because, you know, if you get a double masher, you go night-night, right? You hit both both sides of the carotid, you're going to go out. But we want to be very careful. We're not overly aggressive with the neck. We have to be a, a careful with some of the head postures. We don't go to end range of motion. Um, that can cause some problems um, potentially if we keep doing that in terms of joint wear and tear. Okay? So operating with parameters of uh, end range of motion, right? Don't try to hyperextend your elbow. You don't want to try to hyperextend your neck, right? Okay. Um, bad idea. Uh, or, you know, your head and the occipital joint. Anyway, we'll go. I don't want to get into too much now. I'm trying to keep this practical. But we can certainly work on posture. All right. So let's talk about the slouch head. Okay. So if we're slouched here, this is really simple. You can do two things. One, you can do repetitions. Okay. And you end up looking like a chicken. So close your door or don't do it in front of people. All right. But you're going to pull back and then release. Okay. And as you start out, it could be just that simple. All right. And what you're pulling back through here is notice my head posture. My head has remained relatively the same. What I'm pulling back through here is we have to, you have to remember that our neck, okay. And our head operate and they should operate independently. So I can pull, I can push my head forward and drop my, or my neck forward and drop my head. I, I can pull my neck back and keep my head in that posture, right? These two uh, systems operate independently. And what tends to happen, again, is we allow our cervical spine to drift forward, and now our head has to make up for that lost vision. Otherwise, I'm looking down at the floor in a neutral head position. Okay? So all I'm doing then is saying, this is what my head should be looking like when I'm pushing my neck forward. Now I'm just going to pull my neck back, and lo and behold, I can see again. Right? I can see the screen again. Okay? So it's practicing pulling that head back. Okay? Now, the, again, the first round, if, if you've never done this before, you'll notice, man, I'm really you know, my back of my neck is not doing, my neck appears a little tight, right? You're going to notice tightness and um, irritation, especially if you've been slouched here in the back of your neck. Those muscles have essentially turned into straps at that point. So they've just been holding on for dear life, okay, where these muscles have been stretched out. And now you're ac asking those muscles now to pull your head back and not be straps anymore, but actually exercise. And these muscles are start to shorten, okay? Exercise being, you know, uh, shortened down, okay? And these muscles now, again, will start to shorten in as well, all right? And so you're using the muscles in the back of your neck and your cervical spine area, right? And there are different levels of the cervical spine to pull you back. And those muscles have been strapped, and so they can get irritated, right? And you have muscles here that have been stretched potentially and, um, and elongated for so long. Now you're asking them to short down and maybe even use them to help contract the neck a little bit. And you can have the same problem. So I say all that to say ease into it. So the reps may be first, right? Let's say you do two sets of 10 once in your day, okay? If you feel good about that, no headaches the next day, you feel pretty good, add three sets of 10 once in your day. From there, I'd start adding holds. So you're going to do hold three seconds, one, two, three, and release, okay? Three times a day, or uh, three sets with once a day. So you're adding in the postural hold. Now, that doesn't mean throughout the day you're like, oh, my neck's forward, I'm going to pull it back just a little bit. Great. But what's going to happen over time is if you keep adding more volume, that it's just going to become the way you sit. That's the goal anyway, right? Is that you did three times a day, you know, three three sets, excuse me, a day of 10, back, back, felt good, no headaches. I added the holds. Now I'm three seconds. Now I'm five seconds. Now I'm doing it twice a day, 
and might I might go back up again, back down again and say, instead of doing three sets both times, I'll just do two sets. So I'm a total of four sets per day. And you're like, man, that's really hard to keep track of. Well, write it down somewhere, right? It's, it's one of those things that it's like, well, I don't want to do all the work to feel better. It's like, well, then you don't want to feel better, right? I mean, you can take, you can continue to take NSAIDs and, 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 um, you know, aspirin forever, or you can try to fix the problem and it, it can be fixed, but it's going to require a little bit of discipline and practice. Okay. So that's what the head forward position, right? It's as simple as that. Just pulling the head back. I'm not advocating pulling your, your, um, head. Okay. Again, this is our cervical spine. And if I say head back, we're pulling your cervical spine back. I'm advocating, you know, I'm not advocating doing this with your neck, right? Okay. What needs to be done. I'm talking about when somebody's pushing the head forward, all right? Protraction. Okay. We're just trying to retract it. We're pulling it back and then reestablishing the pattern. Now you're not going to sit like this, but it's like anything else. If you stretch your hamstring, you stretch it a little bit further than you have um, been using it in that range of motion you've been using it. We're doing the same thing with the neck. You know, again, the goal is over time, not that you walk around like this, but that you walk around with a neutral head position. All right. Go to the gym, do the exercises for your upper back, pull your scaps down, lower trap work. All those things are great. Okay. Not saying they aren't. And make sure you're exercising with a cervical spine that's neutral, right? In the neutral spine position. But if even if you got your scaps to move backwards, in fact, if your head's still full and your scaps move down, you're going to see that levator scapulae pop out even more. And you're going to be having potentially more problems. You've got to work on that head position. All right. If you're the other way, and so you've been sitting, sitting a lot like this, you'll notice when you raise your head up, okay, here, right, you're going to notice a lot of tightness. And as if you turn away up here, you're going to, feel a lot of tightness to these muscles. So if you raise up, you can even feel it underneath your jaw, right? And be careful again when you feel under here. These are sensitive tissues, okay? You're not going to jam in there, but you'll notice tightness. And again, if you lean off to the other side, you'll notice a certain tightness on each side, okay? So this is an easy one as well to work on. Now, you want to make sure your neck, your cervical spine is in a neutral posture, okay? This is, we have to be a little bit careful with um, how the head moves, on the spine it's not obviously we can so you know it's not like we, you shouldn't do this but just be careful you're not trying to crank on the neck okay so this is not like when you, you're doing a hamstring stretch and maybe you're a little too aggressive and you know maybe a little sore this these muscles we're going to be really careful with all right um not that they're any different kind of like in terms of muscu muscular construction but that they're around our neck and again if we start cranking on these muscles we can cause some headaches and you'll even notice like your shoulder starts to hurt whatever okay just ease into these things don't try to go to end range and shove your head into these massive positions okay um head rolling can be fine too but i'm gonna give you two things you can do number one is just what i showed you is cervical spine neutrality okay and then raise the head up i'm not going to end range i can go for it i'll go here right that's as far as i can go but i'm just going to go to a range of motion right that's within range that's not in my end range and then i'm just going to lean to one side okay and release and then lean to the other side so i've one made sure i was in a neutral cervical spine position first okay and then i'm leaning from side to side and there's muscles cause scalings that come down and those can get tight as well okay now from here i'm going to give you some parameters of how many times to do this in a second but you lean okay and then raise your head up all right, I'm not going to end range of motion. Okay, so this is the next one. Just lean and then raise your head up, not to end range of motion. All right, so that'd be the next one. This is a progression. The next one, then you could add a rotation. So I'm going to lean, raise my head up, and then rotate. All right, I'm going to lean, raise my head up, and then rotate. Again, I'm not trying to go to end range of motion when I'm rotating. Now, you can just rotate as well. That's fine. Okay. And you'll feel some, if you're really tight, you might feel some stretch there. But it, when you're manipulating these muscles, it can be helpful to put them on stretch in a different way. All right. Different way being like multiple ranges of motion. Okay. That was pretty ambiguous. Multiple ranges of motion. Okay. So again, the progression would be, and the reason the progression exists is you might find that as you just do this, you're like, oh, wow, I'm really tight. Okay. Or if you wanted to raise the head up first, and like, oh, wow, I'm really tight. So either one of those to start with, okay? Then you can add them together, okay? Whether it's the lean and lift, okay? You could lift and lean, right? Those are the next places to go. Then you can add rotation, okay? You're like, I'm, feeling, I'm still feeling tight. Um, you might notice one side's tighter than the other, okay? Now I'm going to add in the rotation, right? Either I lift and lean or lean and lift and then rotate.
okay? If you're in a place where you can hold something, okay, hold a, uh, something that's very stable, right? Don't pull like your desk, you know, your um, filing cabinet over or something, okay? But you can do that same thing and then look away, right? And you'll get some stretch throughout that nerve all the way down your arm, right? The brachial plexus. Um, that's a little bit more for the shoulder as well. But you're just trying to stretch out all those muscles that are right here. You're going to have the same issue though, you, uh, whoever you are, uh, as opposed to the person who's doing this and you're doing that at your laptop, whatever it is, is that you have to correct the posture. So put the laptop on the table, right? Lift the laptop higher, okay? If you want to correct these things, they have to be done uh, while you're doing them. Like, again, the amount of time you spend on that laptop is going to be far greater than you spend in the gym, okay? Again, you can... You can work that upper back musculature, right? All these things, but until you adjust the head posture, you're going to have some trouble. And that, you know, the, the other things include massage. Massage is great. I have no problem, but uh, adjustments are great if you're in a chiropractor. Uh, 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 go to the PT. You can break. All these things are good things, but remember, if, if you adjust the musculature, if you release, if you have some sort of release therapy that you do or part of, that's great, but you're just going to have the muscles go back to that original length if you don't a attempt to... Um, address the majority of time spent in that posture. And that's, that's what I'm trying to advocate here. And it seems so simple, but um, it's a good place to start. By the way, I didn't mention the parameters with the, moving your head around. You can take the same approach in terms of sets and reps. I'm going to do this X amount of time. I'm just going to move through it first. Okay, I'm not going to do any holds just yet. Okay, make sure I don't give any headaches or have any head posture issues. You'll notice that when if you've been tight through here, you can have some shoulder pain manifest, like impingement. I mean, everything's connected. Well, not everything. A, a lot of things, a lot of musculature and soft tissue in the body is connected. So don't be surprised if that happens. Or if you've been hurt, you might notice you get headaches, right? Well, you know, how does that tap? Well, the shoulder hurts, and so you're holding to ten. You know, if you're stressed and you hold your tension here, you can get a headache, right? That's where we get a lot of this attachment from. So take the same approach, though. I'm going to do this twice, you know, 10 reps on each side, whatever level of the progression you're at. Then I'm going to do three sets. Felt good, no problem, right? I'm going to do then, next step is do some holds on top of that. So I'm going to go and I'm going to hold. I'm twisting. I'm doing all the full range right here, but right, I'm going to lean, lift, and twist. Again, not in range, right? But I'm going to hold that now for 10 seconds. And after a while, you might find, just like anything else, that I'm, I feel better. My head feels better. My head is migrating back, and it will. Or, you know, migrate in a better position. Keep doing the stretches, at least at a maintenance level. You don't have to maybe do as much as you've been doing, but you need to make sure you're maintaining it or you'll go right back to that position. All right, hope you found that helpful. Again, that's the first in the video series. There's more ways, there's more techniques. I'm not saying this is an exhaustive list. I'm just trying to give some um, some pointers that may be helpful. Again, be very careful around the neck. We don't want to be going there and do trigger point on a lot of these muscles, right? Especially if you don't know what you're doing. Okay, don't do any of that stuff. You can do some light massages muscles, but again, be really careful with that. A lot of soft tissue, a lot of blood flow things going on in the front of your neck in particular. Um, we don't want to go through end range and uh, in the neck posture. Again, we're just doing some light stretching. Uh, if you're super tight, you're going to find anyway that it won't take much to get you into a stretch position. And you know, if you're that head down person, you're going to feel a lot of tightness, even in your jaw as you try to raise your head up and close your jaw. You'll feel tight through here. You'll see, right? I mean, that's very... Um, a very common thing and obviously you can relieve that right by, by closing your jaw right and then doing these head posture things that i mentioned before now, i didn't mention that when i was talking about make sure your jaw is closed right hey you doing that <laughs> this video is getting dumber and dumber if you do this okay and you're tight through here that muscle is remaining tight so make sure your jaw is you know you close your mouth <laughs> and when you do these stretches i'll end there before the video gets any stranger but again li uh, like this video subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and check out this desk worker remote worker series I'll be talking about other things more performance related as well. If you're not familiar with this channel, I do. I talk about a myriad of things, weight loss, fitness. Um, I just I just like to talk about this field. Um, uh, enjoy spending time with it. And I'm going to hope you find this information valuable.